The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about a half hour to go until the start of trading, folks. And man, they started trading last night. Markets accelerating lower. This would be the sixth straight week, six straight weeks of losses. We start the week down 1.5 percent in the S&Ps and you're a solid 25 points off the lows right now. You were down 85 points at the lows at about 730 in the morning. We've caught a bit of a bounce, but the S&P is still down 1.5 percent. You're trading at 4,056. You are basically remarkably sitting right at where we were for the lows of last week. That is down from 4,300 folks on the acceleration on Fed Day last Wednesday. We give it all up on Tuesday and then we give it all up and then some on Thursday and Friday especially. NASDAQ 100, you're down 2.03% right now. You're a solid 90 points off of the lows. NASDAQ 100 was down about 350 points at about 7.30 a.m. this morning. You got the Dow down 390 points. Let's take that Fibonacci number off there, but you can see the 1618. Okay, talk about an acceleration from those highs. Maybe that's an area where we catch a bounce. We're also right near the lows of Monday as well in the Dow, but you're still down 1.2% in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Bitcoin getting a lot of headlines this morning, below 33,000, 32,800. You're talking about from 40,000 on Wednesday, man. Watch out for Bitcoin. You take a look at the longer term chart on a weekly basis. You had some type of support that you could say there, which was a lower trend line from the lows that we had been achieving. We smashed through that level. The lows from January, folks, 32,855. Now, again, keeping in mind, though, this chart not correlating the weekend action. Not sure if we did get a low lower than that price level. But when you're talking about futures, we are below the lows that we had in January. 30,000, probably the next stop. And if you go below 30,000, folks, 10,000, it's right there. Nothing stopping Bitcoin from going to 10,000, especially as we get a sell off in uh, a broad set of assets across the board. Crude oil down about two bucks right now, trading at 108. We got the gold contract was lower, still lower by 15 bucks. Taking a look at the 15 minute, you were down to about 1855. So gold with the market catching a slight bid from the lows, still off about 15 bucks, though at 1867, and we jumped to notes and bonds now we've gotten a reversal here okay you were down to 117.08 we're talking about yields right now sitting about 3.13 percent i think when i checked it out about an hour ago we were at 3.17 uh not sure if you made it to 3.2 it was probably pretty close at 117.08 uh not sure of the spike yield there Maybe somebody in the den can help me out in terms of what we actually got to for the yields, because you talk about a rise, folks. Uh, can't overstate what's happening in the yield market. You jump over to three-year weekly, right? Talk about falling out of bed, man. You, let's put it back on a daily for a little bit more clarity to take a look at the run that really began last August. Now, that's not even the highs, keeping in mind, okay? The pandemic highs had the tenure at about 140, all right? You're trading at 117.26. The bummer is, can you imagine people that maybe flocked to thinking as the market was accelerating lower, they missed the acceleration, they said, get me out of stocks, you know, buy me some fixed income. Hopefully they didn't when rates were at near zero. But you see the devastation that can happen, man. The 10-year just traded from 140 to 117. Now, the run really began last August when you were sitting at about 135. You were on a nice downtrend channel. And boy, you break out of that channel, man. March 7th, about two months ago, you're trading at 129. We're trading at 117. And it's a continuing trend of lower lows and lower highs, folks. Today, we make a lower low again at 117.08. And you got that 10-year, man, trading at one, uh, excuse me, with a yield of approaching 3.2%. All right, perfect. We got a call. We got our man Jose from Lakeland. Jose, good morning, man. What's happening? Top of the morning, top of the morning. Hey, um, hey, do you anticipate any kind of...
kind of bounce here. I know we're heading down ugly on the S&Ps. I can't imagine heading straight down. But before you answer that, a lot of people are walking around like zombies this weekend, realizing their 401ks are getting crushed. All they had to do is tune in just for the last six months to TFNN. Well, you've had some great calls on the program yourself, Jose, man. I hear you calling into my dad's program out there. Uh, Listen, not like it was indicative, man, but there has been a lot of talk just of the possibility, okay? And and I'm not sure what's going to happen, but you got to be aware of the risks. And not a lot of people, unfortunately, I think we're aware of the risks of how far we have gone up for so many years, not even talking about COVID. Um, Real quick, Jose, you know, I had put up with some of my subscribers, just context wise, right? We kick off 2019 at about 2,500 in the S&P. 2019, that was a great time. We had a little bit of a sell-off towards the end of 2018, okay? We kick off 2020 at 3,250. We're still sitting above 4,000. We came into 2020, folks, at 3,250. We're 800 S&P points above where we were at, you know, as this pandemic was beginning in China in January, February. We come into 2021 at 37, 38, 3750. That's a year into the pandemic after being at 2174, less than a year before. We're still 300 points above that price level. It's important to realize where we've been in the context. Now I have a chart up here, Jose, of the S&P. We're trading at 4,058 right now. 3,800 is totally possible, man. You're just talking about 382. You're talking about giving back to where we began 2021. Um, And you're right, it's not gonna be a straight shot down. The volatility in this market is almost the most worrisome thing, man, because when you're trading up 2%, down 3%, the market is so uncertain where you're going to rest. Uh, I bring like a stock like Airbnb, just indicative of the volatility, man. Airbnb comes out with some great earnings uh, on Tuesday. They are trading at 155 on Thursday morning, and you're trading at 130 right now. That's a decent stock. Yeah, it's a growth stock that's getting crushed, man. But they came out with some good, good numbers. Record quarter for Airbnb on Tuesday, and you're down $25 from where you were trading at 8.30 on Thursday morning. Um, So you could get a bounce, you know, if you're really looking short term. I mean, what what kind of a bounce are you looking for, Jose? Are you trying to trade this intraday? Are you looking for a swing? What are you you looking for? I listened to OB uh, Senior uh, last week. He indicates uh, this is going to be a slow grind down. I can't imagine a straight line move. I'm thinking a slow grind down that, you know, you can jump on Cadence, AMD, Apple, just for a quick trade. Yeah. And, um, um, yeah, I got no OB, problem with that, OB man. Senior, uh, we got to get a movie script together for this guy. The opening <laughs> scene will be in South Boston at his pizzeria. Whitey Bulger walks in for a, a tuna sub with extra pickles. That's the opening scene of the movie. And the next scene is OB Senior behind Santapio's Pizza looking for their special sauce in the That's garbage pails. Right. You know how it's done. You've heard the stories, man. We're going to have to bring you on as a consultant, Jose, for sure. Um, listen, wait, you know, to speak back to the trading, because you're, you're making great points, yes, volatility is a trader's best friend, man. You are going to get bounces in this market. I sent out a note to my subscribers on Friday, and when we got a bounce, man, you know, Friday morning, you, you, you were at... 41, 41.53 at 11.50 in the morning. I said, there's going to be another sell-off in the day, folks. There might be another bounce, too. There's going to be a sell-off, and of course. So, you know, keep your top stops tight if you're trading, man. That's what I would say. And Good yeah, deal. stay tuned Good for one deal. second, Jose. Okay, right? thank you. Okay, I'll finish it up after the break. Have a great one, man. ...governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 40 five years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 60 points right now. So just finishing that conversation real quick. I appreciate Jose calling in to kick off the week. Uh, Two-way market, folks, with a trend being down, okay? Wednesday, we get Fed Day. You're up to 4,300. You give it all back by Tuesday. Some of the moves in this market are dwarfed by how much movement we had last week. Folks, you're looking at a chart that has almost 300 S&P points of movement from 4,303. We almost got a 3,900 handle this morning 31 points away from that we just got a bounce of about 30 points but you zoom in on just the action further on wednesday okay if you take out the run we had in terms of the fed you still got a move of 4150 at two o'clock down to 4100 back up to 4150 by the end of the day that's a 50 point move in both directions wednesday then you fast forward excuse me that was thursday that was thursday you fast forward to friday man you go from 4150 you trade down to a price point of about 4,062. You're talking about almost 90 S&P points. You get it all back to 4,150. Then you do 50 points. You get almost it all back, okay? And then you trade from 4,150 down another 75 points, and you get 50 back by the end of the day. Now, the trend is to lower prices. But yes, you got bounces all over this market and they are huge bounces in terms of percentage wise. So you fast forward to the market that we have this morning, 4,091, the acceleration starts. We trade down 60 points from that area to 4,031. I mean, since then, you just got a bounce of 35 S&P points. Now the 618 of that entire move is 4,069. So yeah, you can definitely look for bounces in this market. I would say the trend is to lower prices. But you can probably trade this market in both directions right now. You're getting moves that are so large as long as your risk reward is in place. And man, I would not be putting positions overnight or into the weekend. You see what can happen on your wake up on Monday morning and the S&Ps are down almost 2%. NASDAQ 100 down 2.5 to almost 3%. Some great conversations going on in the den. Um, just about where we can grow, they bring up Microsoft, right? Microsoft, one of the strongest stocks out there, man. Microsoft, okay, backing it up to get their earnings in the picture. Couple weeks ago Tuesday, absolutely stellar earnings. They were one of the FANG stocks that really crushed it out of the park. They preceded Apple and Amazon missing later that week, right? App, uh, Microsoft, but guess what, folks? Microsoft is getting sold just like this market, okay? Microsoft was trading at 290 on Wednesday afternoon. You're trading at 270 trading at 269 right now. 
you close to 274. Nothing is immune in this market, even the strongest of the FAG stocks out there. Now, you talk about getting smoked, man. Yeah, Rivian. So Ford is out there selling shares of Rivian at a discount, okay? Down 15% to 2385, and this is a scary chart. I mean, even if you take 180 out of the picture, okay, this is a daily. They go public. You trade up to 179. You chop around at about 120 to 100 for a while. Now you're chopping around at $23 on Rivian. Even at these prices, Rivian still valued at about $21 billion. But folks, the next time you see a company that's valued at 80 to $100 billion with a B, pre-revenue, be careful, to put it lightly. Okay, especially when you got market sitting at highs of a bull run in the stock market that's pushing 14 years. Scary stuff going on, man. Uh, Rivian down another 15%. And yeah, anything like this, man, where you're talking about pre-revenue, okay, they're almost the poster boy for getting pummeled in this market, man, because stocks that aren't making money, they're getting pummeled. Uh, and Rivian... They got a valuation that's pretty lofty, even at $21 billion for the type of business they're doing. Now you have Ford selling off some of what they have. And to bring back to the markets, so you're sitting at 4057 right now. 3800 is totally in the realm, folks. That's a 382. You're only talking about 250 points below we're trading at right now. The S&Ps were just down 90 points this morning, completely with the realm. Okay, now we jump to what's the impetus for this market to go higher? Well, we got a big week of earnings, uh, excuse me, we, we do have a big week of earnings, but we also get CPI on Wednesday, okay? Now, this is the number I want you to keep in mind. The April CPI report, this is out Wednesday pre-market, is ex expected to show an overall decline in the annual pace of inflation to 8.1% from 8.5 in March. For the core prices, which exclude food and energy, they're looking for a drop to 6% from 6.5% in March. OK, that's the forecast. So you're looking for an easing of inflation month over month. The yearly stats are not going to be as harsh as they were in March. You could make the argument then that the market currently is pricing in that we are past the peak of inflation. Take that in for a second as you figure out what the market's doing. So where does your risk reward lie? Well, what's going to happen on Wednesday? Well, the market says we should get a number that tells us Maybe it was the worst of the worst in March for a headline number, even on a core number, because the comps we were dealing with were just kind of a recipe for disaster. OK, as in the comps, when you're dealing with the numbers that we were in in 2021, not as harsh as we're going to be dealing with because inflation started to rage as we came into the latter part of 2021. So when you're going year over year, it's going to be very difficult for the inflation numbers to still be so elevated, especially in an 8% number, 9% number, because you're already, already dealing with inflation that had been creeping into 2021. Uh, inflation had not been creeping into 2021 in the months of January, February, and March as much, which is why you have an 8.5% number. Keeping that in mind, the risk seems to be that we get a number that is not as low as the market was looking for. Because, yeah, you start to get some waning, okay? That's going to be important for the market. But overall, you have to keep in mind right now that, my goodness, the market is pricing in that we are past the peak of inflation. The market has been wrong consistently. What if the market is wrong and we're not past the peak of inflation? You have to consider that as a, like a realistic threat to the market. And we're going to get that number on Wednesday. And it's not just going to die on Wednesday CPI. That trend is going to continue for the next two months, three months to decide where the Fed goes from there. Um, Raphael Bostic was out this morning. I saw his interview on Bloomberg before my program. Uh, he seemed pretty dovish. He was saying, yeah, we'll, we'll go a couple meetings. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll pause. You can say anything you want. The data is going to drive the Fed. Right now, the Fed has the expectation that we may be peaking. What happens if that doesn't happen? Markets tumbling, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep it in mind for March. Keep it in mind for the numbers that we get on Wednesday. Um, it's going to be an interesting one, folks. And this article, so this article was out there on, I think, Saturday. Let's see what's dated. Yeah, May 7th. So I read this over the weekend. Center stage is going to be April consumer price inflation on Wednesday. Forecast to ebb from March rates that were the highest since 1982. 
we'll see if that happens, folks. We're going to get that number on Wednesday. Uh, and keep in mind that the market is pricing in that we have probably peaked past the inflation uh, numbers of 8.5%. Core number as well. I mean, crude is still rocking, folks, okay? I'm interested to see what those numbers say, and I think there's still a dramatic risk to the downside. And folks, you're not selling doom and gloom here. That's the thing, right? People will say you're selling doom and gloom by saying the S&Ps are going back to 3,500. Imagine what the market would have said at 2174 if you'd said, don't worry, man, we're going to be sitting at 3,500 in no time. By May 2022, we're going to have unemployment at 3.5, 3.6%. The housing market's going to be booming, uh, and we're going to have the S&Ps sitting at 3,500. That's still a rise over where you kicked off the year of 2020. It's going to be an interesting open, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We got some Disney earnings this week. We got other companies with their numbers out. Stay tuned. We'll go over it all in a minute. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now, and you're looking at an S&P opening up negative 63 points right now, taking that Fibonacci off there. We're off the lows of 4,031, but we are negative by 1.5% to kick off the trading week. NASDAQ 100 off 1.8% right now. You get the Dow off 1.3. Russell off 1.6% right now. Bitcoin off 9%, 32,720. Watch out for that Bitcoin uh, market. Ethereum, you're down 11% right now. Crude off two dollars and 58 cents trading at 107.19 we got the gold contract trading down about 15 bucks at 1867 we jump over to notes and bonds we are now higher on the session after being at 11708 man you just popped 21 ticks in the 10 year 11729 the 30 year basically flat 
We've regained more than a full point in the third year at 136.05. Now, jumping back to that article I was talking about, the headline of that article is talking about plenty of catalysts to help push Treasury rates above the 2018 highs. I think that number is 3.25 percent. Let's see if we get down here. Where are we? I think it's 3.25 was the number that they had in terms of where we were for the 10 year in 2018. I'm going to put it on a chart in a moment. There it is. And while the short term interest rate markets have priced for the policy rate to rise, ah, no, that's not it. I think it's 3.25. All right, let's look at the chart because that's what matters the most. We take a look at the 10 year, we put it on a week. Uh, let's go back as long as we do. And there's your, there's your number, folks. I mean, talk about uh, a perfect cup symmetrical formation. Our man, Basil Chapman, get that from him. He's up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock every day. Uh, yeah, we're right back to that price level, man. And you break below this price level, it looks like 103 might be game, man. I mean, it's remarkable. Let me see if I can find it again. The people we're talking about. I'll pull this up again because in terms of how expectations have shifted so quickly, folks, from where we are. All right, I'll pull it up again. In terms of, it was something like a quarter of, here we go, perfect. A survey just over a week ago, just over a week ago, by Bloomberg's Market Live showed 24% of readers thought the 10-year yields would not break above 3.15% this year. They did it in a week. <laughs> They rose seven basis points to 3.2%. So they did get to that 3.2% on Monday. The 10-year real yield has surged to 0.3%, a level last seen before the pandemic in July of 2019. Uh, talk about surpassing expectations, okay? A quarter of readers thought that the 10-year wouldn't break above 3.15% this year. Well, it did it in a week. It's just a uh, remarkable action across the board. All right, let's jump in to see what else we have going on here. Uh, yeah, talk continuing the trend. You don't necessarily need a recession to talk about lower prices. You have Goldman strategies seeing stocks downside even if a recession is avoided. Constrained equity market returns ahead. Short-term rally similar in size to the one in March. Unlikely. Unlikely. That was quite an acceleration. You put things back on the daily. The one we got in March, you're talking about from 4,100 to 4,600. Now, here's what I'll say. You got a potential ABC that you just crushed through the lows here. You got an A point at 4,800, you got a B point at about 40, even call it 4,100, the tail we got on February 23rd. Now you put this thing on a weekly, okay? I'm gonna take these trend lines off here for a second for some clarity, well, perfect, there we go. Take that Fibonacci number off there for some clarity. If you just look at this on a weekly, 4,800 to about 4,100, that's a 700 point A to B leg. Your C point starts at about 4,600, that would bring the market down to about 3,900. OK, now the volume at these lows on the S&P, you're talking about nine million on the futures the week of February 21st. OK, you're near about nine million again as we came down March 7th. And as the rally began on March 14th, you had a week of eight point seven million. Well, the last two weeks, folks, we just did about 10 million. OK, you did 10 million million the week of April 25th and you did 10.1 million last week when we got below that price level. So you can make the argument that we're coming below that price level, going through the B point with volume, and that gives us 150 points to 3,900 at least if it just completes the A to B, C to D. And I've been talking about 3,800 is the 382, and 3,500 would be about the 50% retracement in the entire move higher. Completely within the realm, folks, aware is possible. And yeah, they've dropped for five weeks in a row and this would be the sixth week if it trades lower. They've cut the year-end target for the S&P 500 twice the year, twice this year. Its current forecast of 4,700, I almost chuckle, implies marginally negative returns for 2022, though they're looking for a 14% upside from current levels. It's possible, okay? That is the opportunity cost that you might be missing out on if you sell this market, folks, okay? Of course it's possible. We see how quickly things can go south, though, from where we are, where we are and where we've been. 
while the gauge could still reach the bank's target of a re recession is avoided, an economic attraction could push it down to 3,600 points. Pretty close to 3,500, right? The only silver lining for investors is that most of the bad news is likely in the price following the recent retreat, suggesting equities will require an ex extremely large negative shock to drive share prices substantially lower in the near future. I disagree with that line vehemently, okay? It's not going to take an extremely large negative shock to drive share prices substantially lower, folks, okay? Explain to me what the extreme negative shock was that sent prices down from 4,300 to almost 4,000. You're talking about a 400-point move in a 4,300-point index. Now, this note is out with where we we're trading right now, okay? But you're talking about an index that just traded down 250 points after we got a, a Fed decision that basically took 75 basis points off the table. Remember the rhetoric at 4,300, folks, because somehow it seems to be forgotten when we're trading at 40,000, 4,050, and everyone's saying that it's all baked in. I just explained to you that, you know what else is baked in? That we're over the peak of inflation. How about that being a potential catalyst for lower prices if inflation does not wane as expected? Analysts, the Fed, they've been wrong continually. They had no idea somehow that inflation was gonna rage towards the end of 2021. And now, analysts, and the Fed is looking for that inflation to wane towards the end of this year. And it very well may, folks, all right? I'm not creating the case that they're all wrong. I'm just creating the case that you better be prepared that they could be wrong. And if they are wrong, it's not going to be some magnificent shock. It shouldn't be, okay? It should just be that they were wrong. And they've been wrong recently, they've been wrong continually, and this environment is very, very difficult to forecast what's going on with the number of variables in play. With that in mind, there is some, some extreme risk to the downside. Airbnb, down another 4.6% today. They had a record quarter on Tuesday. Market doesn't care, okay? You're down almost $30 from where you were trading on Wednesday. That's almost a 20% pullback on Airbnb from where you were at Wednesday. Not a lot of real news from Wednesday. All right, and I bring them up in particular. We did have a trade in them in my newsletter. It was a bearish put, um, a put spread last week that ended up working out, okay? But the reason why I put it on is because these growth stocks are just going bonkers, man, with the volatility that they're facing. So, all right, let's jump over to natural gas. We got a question in the den looking at a little natural gas. You talk about some volatility, man. Almost hits $9. We'll call it nine. What is that, to the thousandth four one thousandths of a penny away from hitting nine bucks you're back to 750 that's a daily uh we'll take a look at natural gas when we get back we'll take a look a little a little bit of a look at crude crude trading at 10709 right now we'll take a look at gold as well down Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P, negative 63 points, NASDAQ 100, negative 185. You got all the markets basically sitting right where you were when you kicked off the opening session. A uh, little bit of a pop, you could say, to the upside. NASDAQ down 180. You're off 1.4% right now. You were, folks, down to 12,343 to our man Jose, right, looking for a pop in this market. Uh, you may be getting it right now. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks before we jump into some commodities. You got Apple. Down only $2 right now. You were down below 153. You're trading above 155 right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft trading above 270. You were at 266 at the low pre market. Amazon shares this morning catching a little bit of a pop on the open as well. We almost got a 2100 handle. On Amazon shares, you're still down 1.6% right now for Amazon shares. Uh, we jump over to Google, down 1.1%. A little bit of a pop though in these markets. Before I jump over to commodities as well, they're talking about Palantir, man, down 20%. You're trading at $7.55 this morning. Now, they have weak revenue guidance and an earnings miss, okay? So they're out with their numbers. They're down 20%. The interesting part of this is they're talking about it in the den, and I had to look it up when I was looking up uh, – Great question, saying, did they go IPO? Did they go SPAC? Um, they are almost below their IPO price. Well, they did the, the third alternative. Uh, they went direct listing, okay? And the reason why I bring it up is because they went direct listing with a price of $7.25, okay? Now, the reason why I bring that up, folks, is because that is a completely arbitrary price, they get to decide the price that they go direct listing. And usually, if you go direct listing, you're, you're lowballing your price to give yourself a pop on the first day. It's an arbitrary price, $7.25. They chose it out of a hat if they wanted to when they went direct listing because the market basically reprices it the moment that the market opens. Well, you're now back to $7.25 after trading up to $45. Bucks. Be careful on this one as well, folks, out with their numbers. Uh, and just uh, interesting this back to that 725, but important to understand how that works because that's not like they were raising capital, okay? They chose that price to just go public to give basically shareholders the right to exit in a public market, not raising money themselves, just directly listing their shares. PLTR is the symbol and you're down 21% down another two bucks just from where we opened or closed, I should say, on Friday. Okay, jumping back to natural gas. Now, I do not trade natural gas, folks. Uh, I would not encourage you to trade it unless you somehow think you have an edge in this market that is extremely volatile, to say the least, okay? Here's your daily. You back it up from where we were at $4.50 as recently as March 15th. Remarkable that you've had the acceleration. You drive up to a high of $8 on April 18th. You pull back 
You drive again up to almost nine bucks. Now, here's what I'll say on the recent move that we have. You're coming right into that 618, which is about $7.36. We made it to a low of about $7.51 today. You did it in almost two days, though. Uh, the moves down a lot faster sometimes than the move up. I just don't trade natural gas, folks. And this market is just bonkers right now in terms of what's going on with energy markets, natural gas in particular. Uh, so I would be careful and have some quick fingers regardless. Now, crude. Down about three bucks to 106.59 right now. We take a little bit of a longer term look on crude. I mean, it's almost been a one way shot from six dollars and fifty cents, man. And six dollars and fifty cents is the price I have on the continuous contract on the Thinkorswim platform. That is actually when we went negative, if you recall, right? That is when things went completely negative uh, and the market almost broke itself. Now back to a daily. And just zooming in on the recent run we had from a price level of $62.43, which is just crazy to think about in December. I'm going to take off the longer term Fibonacci number. I'm going to look at the run that we've had just recently up to the high of 130. And you've been hitting that 50% line of about 96 bucks. Bucks is where you found a bid. 115 is where you topped out back in March. You could make the case that between about $95 and $110 is an area that crude is in right now. It's a $15 range. We're near the top part of it. Um, but I'd be careful on that one, man, because there is some severe risk to the upside in that crude market as well. And gold, down about $20 right now. We make a high last August of 2089. We get within about 10 bucks of that high. What did we get to? 2078. So almost at that price level. Now, if you take where we were January 28th, which is where the run began higher on gold, you can see that we're almost right at the 786. I mean, maybe you give it all back. Maybe you trade down to that 1783 because you're below the 618. You just traded back up, bounced lower again, and everything's getting sold in this market, folks. They're even talking about, you know, whether it's the, the oil stocks, no matter what you're in. There's no hiding in this market right now as we're getting a little bit of a leg lower. Yet again, we just gave up the pop we got on the open. You get the NASDAQ down an even 2% from the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P down 1.9% right now. Disney catches a little bit of a pop from 107 to 109. You're still down about 9 tenths percent. Disney has their numbers on Wednesday before the bell. Disney will be looking. They got about an $8 move priced into their earnings. I think they're looking to add about 4 million subscribers. Put on a note to my subscribers this morning with the exact number. I recall what it was, 4 point something million subscribers for the quarter. Uh, that will be a slowdown from the previous quarter, but it won't be a miss, as in if they, the expectation is they're going to be adding. Okay, Netflix actually lost customers. The parks business expected to resurge uh surge big time from last year uh i'm generalizing but they're out with their numbers wednesday man and you take a look at disney you put this thing on a longer term time frame i'm going to back it up to a five-year weekly and just remarkable that you're sitting where you were at basically the pop of april of 2020 on the covid lows you're back to where we began the run higher in 2019 what is so remarkable about this folks is and i'll have to do another deep dive into uh where the accelerations began because many of these legs in 2019 had to do with the details of disney plus coming about the first accelerations back here in march had to do with the fact that they even started talking about okay maybe it was in april i'll get the exact dates the pricing alone of disney so you have a huge acceleration up you give it all back you're back to the 786 they got their numbers coming out and they're still sit facing some headwinds in a big way streaming it's a tough go around right now. The one reason I love Disney is because they're much more than streaming, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, they get the parks. Parks is going to do big business for a period of time that we are in, and uh, movie theaters as well. We're not quite back in a movie resurgence, but I imagine this summer is going to be a big one in a big way for those movie theater chains uh, as everybody kind of waiting to get back to a more normal version of society where they can go back into a packed movie theater and really enjoy it. All right, let's see what other headlines I got pulled up here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Talk about demise, man. Day Trader Army loses all the money it made in the meme stock era. So much for diamond hands, man. Uh, now, this is an estimate, folks. OK, um, I was reading this before. 
The calculation is based on trades placed by new entrants since the start of 2020 and uses exchange and public price feed data to tally overall profits and losses. I mean, it's a generalization, okay? This is not a complete science where it's accurate, but boy, the estimated losses, they were ahead of the curve big time and you're back to zero. And not surprising when you got the fan favorites like AMC down 78%, Peloton off 90%. We all know Zoom, Roku, et cetera. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a couple other articles we're going to talk about here. we got some fixed income to talk about. We've got plenty of cash to talk about as well. Right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You get the S&Ps negative by 55, NASDAQ 100 negative by 187. You're looking for some strong equities out there. One of them, man, Walmart, holding up relatively well. You're positive by two tenths percent today. You look at the acceleration in Walmart. We do have some Walmart shares in my newsletter, folks, Rocket Equities and Options. You can check that out on the front page of TFNN. Up to 160, you're sitting at 150, you're right near the top end of where we've been consolidating for some period of time. Walmart lagging the market extremely, but right now, uh, somewhat of a safe haven. You jump to Target, right? Check out Target, up a full percent on a day like today, man. Uh, remarkable action, to say the least. And yeah, um, some feedback in the den, talking about... Uh, at Disney, so full, overflow parking. Uh, they haven't opened Blizzard Beach yet. Not enough employees. Uh, talking to one of the employees there. Employees are tough, folks. You're seeing it all the time. Human capital, okay? Now, what I want you to keep in mind is how that relates to the inflation picture, okay? We have, what, 11.5 million jobs open. We have unemployment rate at 3.6%. And we still have businesses continuing to struggle to find employees. Well, what is the solution for that? The solution for that is to pay more. If you pay more, that causes wage increases. Wage increases can lead to inflationary tendencies. That's the toughest part of what's going on here, okay? The influences 
in this market that have to do with inflation are not over, to say the least. Now, we take that, folks. You talk about a trader's market. Larry Pezzamento has a live trading webinar a week from tomorrow, okay? You can sign up. It's $295, folks. It's a five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Larry doesn't really like to trade for the final two hours of the trading day. That's the reason why he wraps it up at 2. 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. a week from tomorrow. You get a month of his newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, free included in that. Right when you sign up, you get that free week, uh, free month of Fibonacci 24-7. Larry had some great reports out this morning for his kind of weekend wrap-up of Charts of the Week. I encourage you to sign up, folks, and please, if you're thinking of signing up, okay, it is going to take place in our Discord server. There'll be a special room in there for those that sign up for this live trading webinar event with Larry a week from tomorrow and talk about a great market, folks. Uh, not sure what volatility is going to be like on May 17th, but in general, we got quite a market right now for a live trading event. That's a week from tomorrow, and please don't wait until the very last second because we got to get everybody in the Discord room. Uh, we'll do our best the morning over if you sign up, but there might be a slight lag get in there sign up now man start signing up uh for fibonacci 24 7 you'll get the newsletter for at least a week ahead of the event you'll be in there you'll be rocking folks larry coming up live at 11 fast market at 12 steve rhodes tom o'brien live from three till four have a great monday everybody